December 8th, 1976. A television crew is shooting an episode of The Six Million Dollar Man at Pike, an amusement park in Long Beach, California. A prop worker is told to move a wax figure, but when he lifts it up, its arm falls off, revealing bone and tissue. What he just touched was a mummified body. An autopsy revealed that he died of a bullet wound to the chest. When his mouth was opened, a clue to his identity was revealed, a ticket stub to Louis Sony's Museum of Crime. Louis Sony had passed away, but his son was contacted and the mystery of the long dead man's identity was solved. He was Elmer McCurdy, one of the last outlaws of the Wild West. McCurdy was born on New Year's Day, 1880 in Maine. His mother, 17-year-old Sadie, couldn't bear the shame of being a single mother and he was adopted by his uncle George and his wife Helen who raised him as their own. The identity of his father was never revealed. George McCurdy died in 1890 and Sadie came to live with Helen and Elmer. One day when Elmer was a teen, Sadie revealed the truth of his parentage and he flew into a rage. He became an unruly teenager and took up drinking. As an adult, he would develop into an alcoholic. He drifted around the eastern United States and was arrested for public intoxication in 1905. In 1907, he enlisted in the army and was stationed at Fort Leavenworth for three years. During this time, he received training in the use of nitroglycerin, though the quality of that training would later be questioned. In 1910, he received an honorable discharge and shortly after that, he began his short career as a train and bank robber. But the only thing remarkable about the heist he pulled off was his ineptitude. His first job was robbing the Missouri Pacific train number 104. He had been tipped off that there was $4,000 on board in a safe. McCurdy and three other men successfully stopped the train and decided to use nitroglycerin to blow open the safe. But McCurdy was overzealous and used too much. All of the paper money inside was destroyed and most of the silver coins melted into the safe. They were only able to haul off with $450 in coins. Six months later, McCurdy and two other men decided to knock off the Citizens Bank in Chautauqua, Kansas. This time, McCurdy's nitroglycerin blew off the vault door but left the safe intact. They were only able to steal $150 in coins from trays that were not locked up. His final robbery took place on October 4, 1911. He had a tip that there was a train with $40,000 on it, but when he attempted to rob it, he picked the wrong one. He ended up stealing $46 from the mail clerk, two jugs of whiskey, a revolver, a coat, and the train conductor's watch. One newspaper at the time called this heist the smallest in the history of train robberies. After this score, he went to a friend's ranch to lay low and got drunk on the whiskey. Meanwhile, a $2,000 bounty was put on his head and a posse of three sheriffs tracked him down. At daylight on October 7th, a shootout between the posse and McCurdy broke out that ended with McCurdy catching a bullet to the chest and dying. His body was brought to Undertaker Joseph L. Johnson in Pawhuska, Oklahoma. His body was unclaimed and Johnson refused to release it until he was paid for his services. Eventually, after a few months, Johnson put his embalmed and preserved body on display as the bandit that wouldn't give up. He put a rifle next to the corpse and charged people a nickel to see it. Five years later, in 1916, a man would show up claiming to be McCurdy's brother and said he just wanted to give Elmer a proper burial in San Francisco. Johnson relented and released the body. But Johnson was deceived because this man was not really McCurdy's brother. Instead, he was James Patterson, owner of the Patterson Carnival Show. In 1922, Patterson sold his operation to Louis Sony. When Louis Sony died in 1949, McCurdy's body was placed in storage until it was sold to the Hollywood Wax Museum in 1968. It would later change hands again when it was sold to Ed Leersch, owner of the Pike, the amusement park where McCurdy's corpse was accidentally discovered. McCurdy was finally given a proper burial in the Boot Hill section of the Summit View Cemetery in Guthrie, Oklahoma. There was a service that was attended by about 300 people. Two feet of concrete was poured over his casket to ensure that his body would never be stolen. And that was the sad fate of the outlaw Elmer McCurdy.